I've done a couple of videos about various self-hosted photo management applications, amongst which was also Image. And I know a couple of people asked me, you know, have I made my mind up? Have I decided whether I was going to change from PeeWeeGo to one of those that I've covered before? I'll put links below as well to those videos if you're interested still in, still in evaluating some of them. And although Image has not got all the features yet that Puigo has got, you know, just due to its interface and a lot of what it's done already, it's for me, it's maybe now ready enough for me to, to switch. So I've started moving all my photos across to Image and I've decided to host it actually on my home server at the moment, mostly because it's gigabytes of photos and videos and various other things. But something that was of concern to me was that if you have exposed a shared album, it also needs access or the remote user needs access to the slash API path to access the API functionality, not directly, obviously, but due to how the share works. And to a certain extent, that potentially could expose a problem. You know, if it is your private photos and family photos and that sort of thing. I'm not aware of that there actually has been any issues with that. But this is an interesting solution that I just found. Image public proxy. So what it really does is it's removing or not, it's not requiring that any users that have got a sh access to a shared album any longer need direct access to the API or to your actual hosting. What will actually happen is the link that's given out is going to point to this image public proxy. So they'll be hitting the public proxy and in the background, the public proxy will be pulling what it needs privately through the API and everything in the background. It also strips off various of the metadata. So things like location and camera details and a whole bunch of other things are stripped out. What is actually going to be visible really is just the photo and the caption at this stage, if I recall correctly. So it's a nice way to safely expose your photo albums. There are There is, of course, still one shortcoming, though, with image. And that is that, well, there's actually two shortcomings. There is no landing page on image that you can go to and sort of see all the shared albums that you've, that you've clustered around hiking and places of interest and various things. And the other thing, of course, is image still doesn't have nested albums. So you can't put all your, like your hiking photos and your things together in a bunch of sub albums under, say, hiking. And I'll show in a minute how I've got around that really. In a way, it's a bit of a workaround and it's got nothing to do with image, I'm afraid, but it's working. I think it'll work for me and you can judge for yourself and have a look. So on their GitHub site here, they do explain in a little bit more detail how this all actually works really. Basically, once you have set it up, it's actually quite seamless. You really don't have to do anything else again. It's, it'll just run and you can just share as you would normally do with an image. The difference is people will hit this proxy and not your image server directly. And you'll see here they are explaining also about that still access to the API path if you are doing the normal share from within image. And again, I'm not aware of any particular issues with image. It's just that this would be a, an additional extra safe, secure step really for anyone to take if you are concerned about that sort of thing. And I can just quickly show as well the two things you really need to do. There's, there's some pretty good detail here on how to install it and what to do and how it works and additional configs for the config file. It uses Light Gallery to do the actual rendering and display of the photos. But I think what I'll do is... I'm just going to show you the two chief changes you need to make. And the one thing will just be your Docker install, if that's how you're going to be using it. I'm typically using Docker because it does isolate things nicely and you know uses its own, I've got it on its own Docker network. So I'm not going to go in detail, but I'll just show the Docker Compose and the one setting you need to change in image itself. So this is the Docker Compose. And what I've done is I'm running it in a potato stack. I'll put a link as well to my entire image stack at the moment. You'll see I've just tagged or I've attached the sort of image public proxy. It's an extra service I've defined and I've attached it to my normal image stack. And I've therefore also added over here, depends on image server, image dash server, because that's the service that I've got running, the normal front end service that I would be accessing if I was just going directly into my image server. So obviously all that's really saying is wait and make sure that is running before you start image public proxy. It pulls this image. I've just set hard set the container name and the host name over there. The restart unless stopped. I've told it to join two networks. Yours might look different over here. 
there is an image network that I have defined for the image database. The I think it's got its own proxy at web server and that sort of thing. And I've also got a reverse proxy net that I run for any of my front end facing applications. So I have just said in this case, I also want image public proxy to be part of that reverse proxy net. So that if you type my URL in or the share address, it's going to point. It can then, in other words, just access it through the reverse dash proxy dash net network. I didn't need the ports or to expose those ports because I have got my reverse proxy and image public proxy on the same Docker network. So it is pointing to the container name, which is image dash public proxy and using its internal port of 3000. The environment here, image underscore URL, is just telling image public proxy where to find your image server. And this should be fairly default. If you stuck to the defaults, typically that service is called image-server and its port is 2283 as, as standard. And just remember again, for it to access or be able to access it by the container name, it needs to be on the same Docker network. That, that's the rule of thumb there. And whenever you are pointing at a container, you're always referring to its internal port, not the external facing port, its internal port. Most cases it'll be the same port number, but just in case you have changed. Health check, you don't really have to do anything. It's just running a health check on the container. Just make sure that you know that is the same as your name of the container up there, but it should be. I am running Watchtower just to notify me if there's any updates, so you might not have that label added over there. You do need to also just map a volume to access that config file, the light gallery and the image public proxies little config file. And I've actually there, you'll see at the end, I have put a colon RO for read only. It's just got a read access. That's all it needs. And there's two parts. If you look at the colon here in the middle, the right part, don't change this over here, the slash app config, because that's internal to the container. It always stays the same. But the left side over here from the colon, you'll see starting with a slash, that is your physical path where that config.json file is located. So I've got the physical path slash config.json and you know then the rest is the container name on the right over there. So that in essence really is the Docker Compose. If there are questions, just ask me and I'll be happy to try and answer those in the in the comments. Let's just have a look now at the one change you need to make in the image server itself. This is the image server, my image server itself. And all I've done is I've just clicked on my profile and gone to administration. And you'll see here on the left is settings. And these are the various settings for your image server, which I won't go through again. I've done that already in the other video. But the important one here is server settings. And what you are pointing here normally too is you will normally define whatever your external domain is for your server. The reason for that is whenever you clicked share inside a album in image, it's going to prepend this at the front of the slash share, whatever the long address is that it defines. But remember now, we don't want it to point anymore at your actual server. We want it to point to your public proxy, the image public proxy. So what I've put in here, this is the URL or that I'm pointing to for that image public proxy. So you'll see if you click any links now, or create any links, it's going to create them with this address slash share, whatever the case is. So I think let's go have a look then quickly where you would find those links and how you'd create a share link before I actually go and show you what you will actually see. If we just go back to normal image server, and we'll go down to shared links over here. These are the links that I've already defined. So if you wanted to go and collect or fetch that link or edit that link even, these will be just like you normally do them inside image. But you can obviously edit that link if you wanted to, to switch certain things on and off over here and expiry and so on if you wanted to and change its name. But the important part would be there you can copy. Now just bear in mind, I am on an IP address now, I'm not using my domain name because this is now sitting internal on my network. So if you try and copy a link, it's going to give you this error, I cannot copy, make sure you're accessing it from HTTPS. So 
You can either manually prepend that yourself, that URL I showed just now, or when you create it, you'll also get that address fully to use. Or obviously, if you've got a domain name, a HTTPS, this thing will actually copy fine and, and it won't really be a problem. But I think let's look at an album and I'll just show you quickly that it's exactly the same as how you would normally share an album and how you'd see that address. So if we go down to albums over here and we could just say maybe take this one, Chromorophir. Typically, you're going to use this up at the top here, the share icon. And if I click on that now, it's actually going to show that there, there is actually one there already. But just for the sake of now, let's say I was going to create a new one. I will just click here on create link. You would put in whatever the description is. And I'm just going to say description test because I'm going to delete this one. If you wanted to password protect it, I don't think that's going to be possible now because we're not using, oh, you'd actually have to click on require a password and you could put a password. I haven't actually tested this, but the idea of the public proxy is that it should require a password. Um, if you're going to share links, private links out to family, the important thing is if there isn't a password, they just mustn't publish that link anywhere and it'll actually be fine. Nobody's going to discover the link. It's completely private. Whoever they share it within the family is going to be able to use it. And that's what I'm doing normally. Well, I don't allow public user to upload. And I don't think public proxy, yes, it does not allow any uploads or anything that requires a login of any form. The only thing you can do maybe is set an expiry if you want to. And then you're going to say create link. There is a QR code, but your important thing is you'll see it's created the link here with that prepended URL that we defined just now for the public proxy. And you can just basically copy it like that. Oh, well, I'm not doing it through HTTPS again, but the other way you can just sort of do it is you can just click and hold on your mouse, drag it to the right, right click and say copy. And that is the other way you can get that link. That link is now fine. If you send this link out and you share it to people, all they have to do is click on it and they in the album, being able to view it. So I think before I show you how it works when you've got the link, let me just show you how I've worked around that shortcoming of the fact that there is no home page landing page and there's no way of seeing really what different albums are shared and how you can nest them. All I've really done is I've done this on my own. WordPress website, I basically just created a new page and I've called it Gadgeteer ZA Public Photos. You could call it whatever you want to. It's basically just a landing page or a page that you share. I've explained a little bit about it over here and one of the shortcomings and so on and so forth. But what I'm really showing you is that there is a link and this is just an image that I put in with an associated link. So if a person clicks on this, it'll take them straight to the album. And I've use this also so that I could give a little bit of a description about the album over here. What I've done with places of interest is it takes you to a second page on the website where it lists various links with places of interest. So that's how I got around the nested albums not being visible on image. Um, this is also an album on its own. So if you click on it, it's going to take you straight to it. So if I, for example, click here on gadgets and tech, that's it. This is now what you would see or anybody would see if it was image public proxy, the link that you gave out. This is exactly how people are going to land in your album. You'll see, unfortunately, it doesn't have any album description pulling through. I'm hoping maybe that will also come through because if you haven't got the web page like I've just shown you, no one's going to really see what your sort of context and description around this album actually is. So hopefully that still comes into image public proxy. But if it doesn't, you know, I've done it on my website. So you've got the various images. You can scroll up and down here and have a look. But this is what I like. If you click on it to open it, this is the light gallery view. So now you're seeing the picture sort of full screen. And you'll see here is the whole caption that it's pulling in from image public proxy is pulling this caption across from your image server. So as you, you know, click from photo to photo, you'll see the caption is changing at the bottom and you can click on the right or the left over here. If you've got a tablet or a phone, it's going to swipe. You can swipe left or right as well. And that really is, that is really what Image Public Proxy does. This is basically it. It's fairly simple. It does what you really need. It's got a few other options here like full screen, 
you can zoom in and out you can download the i think this is the individual image if you close it up here i thought there was an option to download the album but no it doesn't look like the whole album but that that is really sort of it and if we just go back to my album again you'll see what my nested album looks like over here is this is on that web page again i've said places of interest sub albums of places of interest i've visited if you click here it opens the page on my website but if you scroll down you'll see these are various places of interest that i've sort of just listing on this page at the moment so it's a nice easy way for people to see what you know various albums and how you've clustered your albums together and that sort of thing really so if i go to custom wash it's the same thing videos will load it's going to depend of course on whatever hosting and network you've provided you know how fast the the videos are going to load but it's it's working fairly well um, i think if i just take this a bit right let me just see if there is a video i can play here somewhere i uh, can't remember pretty sure there are but have sworn i had videos yeah i think the boom slung we've got one of these is a video yeah ah this is a video so it can maybe take a couple of seconds depending on you know caching and other things I don't think my link is actually terribly fast but so there is going to be a maybe this is a little bit of buffering but hey you know what you can host it from home for free so it's not going to cost a cent anymore in a gigabyte of online hosting that's not too bad plays okay i think so it might just take you know a couple of seconds or half a minute to to buffer if if, if necessary so one last thing I can maybe just show you is just quickly how this actually works also if it's on a phone it's remember now it's just going to open actually in a web browser okay so if somebody's clicked on the link this is really what they're going to see on their phone and you'll see the caption is also updating at the bottom as I'm scrolling along there the caption is actually updating and I'm just swiping left basically at the moment you can swipe left or right You'll see you do have the option at the top there also for download, closing, zooming in. Oh, that's a mess. I don't really shouldn't be zooming in on that really. You can also swipe along the bottom over here and you know jump to any other point in the album as well. So that really is mobile. It's pretty well much the same and it works just as well, really. So yeah, that's really pretty well much it you can also scroll down you know through the whole album if you're not zoomed in on the on the picture so yeah that's really mobile so yeah that is really it there's not much more i can say about it but i think for those that are using image the image public proxy is something that may give you a lot more peace of mind if you want to be really sure that you're not exposing your image server directly to the public hope that reassures some people and you found some of this of interest as I said, I will put all the links as well to my album. You can have a look at that and push through, see how it does work and how, what the photos and so on look like if you use it yourself. But yeah, that's it. So thanks very much for watching and stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video.